едно такова ирландско време е навън. Сега ще си поговорим за ирландския танц и за това, което ни очаква. Започвам с Росен. Как така се случи, че Лингър, това е името на спектакъл, идва тук в България? И защо всъщност ние сме първите и привилегировани да посрещнем този спектакъл тук? Ами... Интересна е връзката, защото ние от доста време комуникираме с господин Дегали. Той е малко известно, че освен солист и дансов директор на Riverdance, този популярен спектакъл, който започва преди World of the Dance, той стартира преди ирландския танц със съвремен и класически танц. И сега в края на кариерата си той основава компания, която създава един нов стил, една нова посока към ирландския танц и го умешва с съвременния танц. И се получава така един доста поетичен и доста лиричен и красив стил, който публика ще може да се наслади на 20 май. So it's not the traditional Irish dance as you know it. The guy, Brendan de Galli, who's coming with his team, he was actually in the original river dance back in 1994. But he has, you know, he's been with them for a while, but he has moved on uh, in a sense that he is exploring Irish dance, though more contemporizing it, and uh, if you like, exploring themes that go beyond the traditional Irish dance themes and also a bit beyond, as I understand it, because it'll be the first time for me to see it as well on the 20th of May uh, at 8 o'clock, everyone. Um, uh, it'll be my first time seeing it as well, but it, it is, if you like, it's a merging of traditional Irish dance with a more tempor a contemporary expression and postmodernist. You know, what, what does modern dance do? It questions, it raises issues in a way that traditional dance doesn't so obviously. So that's what it's about and another reason that I wanted to support it because I'm looking forward to seeing it as well and I hope you are. That was my next question. Why do you support all that? <laughs> exactly. Well, because Rossin is doing such great work on sort of the more traditional Irish dance, but he's also working with other dancers, uh, cross-cultural. I mean, I saw something the other week where there was Spanish and even Turkish dancing involved. So you're working with other people. And I think that's what an ambassador of his country should be doing, is, is supporting those who are pushing the cultural envelope out. And I think uh, his proposal to bring Brenda on here was a surprise to me because it is definitely pushing the envelope out. And I think that's great because uh, Irish culture, yes, is traditional, but there's a lot of modern stuff here as well. And of course, Bulgaria, there's a young uh, population here in Sofia and it's, uh, culture here is amazing. I mean, I go to ballet here. Uh, you know, people go to dance, people go to theater, people go to music. So I think it's wonderful to bring it here and show Ireland in a slightly different perspective and uh, a modern, there are modern issues being raised here in this uh, dance piece and I think, you know, uh, for a place like Bulgaria that's an ideal. Да, разкажете малко повече за това наистина какво можем да видим като сюжет в този спектакъл, освен изразяване на различни танцови традиции, но по един наистина съвременен интересен начин, какъв е дълбокия смисъл? Да, това, което посланико обясни, той го обясни доста добре, че всъщност модерните стилове вече те търсят нещо повече в дълбочина. Традиционен танц също го търси, но той е там, той по принцип го изразява. Докато модерното той търси да донесе някакво послание. И това, което самия Брендън предоставя на публиката си е търсенето на идентичност през неговия опит, през неговата гледна точка, как той го чувства, как той разбира нещата. Но смятам, че посланието е универсално за всички хора. В смисъл, т.е. ние... Всеки един от нас търси тази идентичност, особено в едно толкова динамично общество, където си имат непрекъснато рамки, непрекъсно се поставят стереотипи, норми на поведение и така нататък. Човек понякога 
почва да забравя кой е всъщност, нали, какво е ценно за него, къде, къде се намира той, какъв е, каква е неговата персоналност и какво иска за себе си най-вече. И това ще бъде доста точно показано чрез личния опит, чрез личните преживявания. Тоест този артист той ще сподели нещо много дълбоко от себе си. Тоест вътре имаме и театрален елемент, имаме филмов елемент, освен дуета, който ще бъде от двамата танцори, ще имаме художник, който ще допълва тази палитра от изкуства, плюс видеата от страни, тоест има и мултимедиан елемент вътре, който ще, така ще успее да насити сетивата на хората с картините и с а, посланието, което артист иска да предаде. Може би така трябва да го, да го, да го изразим. И така, съчетавайки тези три, три вида изкуство вътре в самия спектакъл, той създава един, един, един доста силен емоционално театрален спектакъл. Много добре го описа. А ти самия как си обясняваш им на заглавието на спектакъл Лингър? И това е доста интересно, аз самия така и не успях все още да го попитам самия артист с Бренда Дегали, какво точно иска да каже с това, с това заглавие, но бих се радвал наистина и аз да разбера да го попитам на лично може би. It sounds very postmodernist in the way it's, it's, uh, it's, it's being put out there. I mean, we'll all go and take different things out of it. But there, I think it includes all sorts of the issues and tensions that arise in our everyday life. You have the young dancer, the older dancer, you have music, you've got uh, film, you've got that interceding with each other. And then you have this, this tension between the older dancer and the younger dancer, uh, as I understand it, but I haven't seen it yet. And then there are issues of sexuality and things like that. So they're all sort of the modern issues that we, we face in our daily lives. I don't know what I'll come away from it with. I think he posits the idea that tension is somehow good. Now, at my age, I take pills to stop tension, <laughs> but um, perhaps he's still relatively young in comparison to me. He's about 46, isn't he? Yeah. So, and he's dancing with somebody who's probably about half his age. So there is that, it's that question of, I think, whether you give up when you're 46 or whether you uh, extend your body and, 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 and keep, it, keep, it, uh, keep it going. And then uh, I think there will be the issue as to whether old and young can coexist to, um, together well and whether the assumption we always make is that young is better than old when it comes to physical things. So I, I expect to get lots of stuff from it, but it probably won't be the same thing as Rawson gets or, or, you, or you get from it. But it, it is closer in that sense to modern dance, where, I don't know, you, you often go to something modern dance and you come out and you say, that was great, but I don't know what it was about. But, you know, and maybe a year or two later you'll be reflecting and say, ah, oh, that's what they were on about. You'll hit something in your life that will, will bring you back to that, to that point. Where is the force of a traditional Irish dance? Well, my goodness, you've asked a very hard question. Um, I think the force was always there to an extent. A colonized people, it was, their, it was their way of expressing themselves. But I suppose if you look at contemporary Irish dance, or not contemporary, but contemporary old Irish dance, it really took off in 1994 at the Eurovision Song Contest. I don't know, you wouldn't recall it because you're far too young, but in the interval, you know that interval bit in the Eurovision Song Contest that's usually very boring. It, they performed Irish dance, but it was a, a sort of a modernized, re-energized version in 1994, and that was called River Dance. And that captivated the entire uh, European audience, and it went on from there for years and years, River Dance, and it had offshoots all over the world. And uh, I think that is the, 
it, if you like, that was the, the starting point of this interest and this refining of the energy in Irish dance and also modernising slightly some of the older steps and giving them a new vitality and also inter, interwoving them with other types of dance, uh, American step, uh, uh, Spanish dance and so forth. So that's really, I think it was um, a lucky chance in a way that they put on during the inter uh, interval in the Eurovision Song Contest in 1994, this presentation of Irish dance with very young people. And also I think there is a, an element in older folk dancing folk music is it, it comes from a poor people. You were a poor people, we were a poor people, we were colonised. And so you, you really had only your own bodies and a few uh, uniforms and things to wear, uh, costumes to wear, to express yourself culturally. So I think that also explains why the dance is so important here in Bulgaria and in Ireland, is that we weren't a rich people, we weren't able to have schools of painting and schools of, of, of sculpture so much. We had to you know, rely on, on the basic stuff that we had, which was ourselves and our own genius. Well, I look forward to seeing you all at Teatro on the 20th of May at 8 o'clock to see Linger, which is a, I'm not sure what it is, but I know that it's got Irish dance in it, it's got music, it's got film and photography, and it's a fusion of the traditional Irish dance and modern dance and modern ideas. So I think if that grabs you, if any one of those grabs you, please come and join us on the 20th of May, 8 o'clock at Teatro.